In this macro photography tutorial, we're taking a super macro close-up look at the surfaces of sugared candies. These little jelly sweets uh, with all sorts of different colours and flavours uh, and sugar on the surfaces. Uh, I think it's going to be a really interesting shoot, probably with some nice abstract shots at the end. And of course, uh, you get to have some little treats along the way. Stick around and I'll get started in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adaptalux and welcome to another macro photography tutorial. Today we're taking a look at some jelly candies, some little sugared sweets. Uh, a couple of weeks ago we went out to Skegness and we were shooting all sorts of different uh, classic British seaside foods in macro. Uh, I'll link to that video up in the top right hand corner if you've not seen it. But during that video we found some candies and it was really interesting uh, getting up close and shooting the, uh, the different colours and the textures found on the different types of sweets. But I wanted to bring that idea into the studio. I think we can get much, much closer. We can try some focus stacking and ultimately get some really interesting shots and expand upon this subject a little bit more. So I'm going to go and uh, take a look at what candy I've got and then we can get to shooting. I've gathered a few uh, varieties of sweets to uh, try out today. I've got some Bassett's licorice of all sorts. I've got some uh, Sour Patch Kids and I've got the, uh, the ever favorite Haribo Tang Fastics. Uh, now, two of these are pretty similar. It's just jelly sweets covered in sugar. Uh, the, um, the Bassett's licorice, all sorts are a little bit different, but they still have a type of jelly sweet in there with a little coating. And it's that jelly that I'm looking for. It's slightly transparent. So I think we can shine a little bit of light through it and maybe pull out some of the colors and the interesting textures found because of that sugar. This is all something that I wanted to try outside um, a couple of weeks ago, but I think it's going to need a really, really close up lens, a very controlled environment, a tripod and perhaps a little bit of focus stacking. I'm going to get all of my um, equipment sorted out now so that we can get a nice close up look at the surface of these suites. This is my camera setup for today and as you can see it's considerably more elaborate than uh, the one we were walking around Skegness with a couple of weeks ago. On the front here I've got a reverse lens. Uh, I've got uh, an extendable uh, extension tube and a Nikon conversion mount to my Sony. This is a setup that we've you've been using for years. It's super cheap and really effective at getting massive magnification factors. Um, I've got that mounted to my Sony a7 III and uh, a manual focusing rail. Uh, this is all, of course, on a tripod to keep the whole thing steady. I've also got a little manual shutter release cable here so that I'm not wobbling this setup as I go. I've talked a lot about this uh, reverse lens setup in previous videos, which I'll link up in the top right hand corner and down in the description. If you want a little bit more information about how uh, to build a setup like this for very little cost and how to use it effectively. I'm going to be using this to get really, really close up on the surfaces of my sweets and hopefully see every little tiny grain of sugar attached to that jelly. So I've gone ahead and straight away placed a little cherry sweet in front of this lens and you can see immediately how close we are to that sugar on the surface there. Um, but you can probably also tell that there's a few drawbacks from a setup like this. First of all, and I think the most noticeable, the depth of field is so, so shallow. We're actually at f5.6 right now because we really need the light. Uh, this is um, 1 60th of a second, f5.6 and ISO 20,000. That's just to get us enough light to actually be able to see um, our suite. If I were to put my ISO down to a more reasonable level at say 800, the photo is almost completely black. The same if I wanted to um, get a little bit extra depth of field, I would have to whack my ISO up even further just to get to say F11, uh, which is still not 
really that great in terms of depth of field. Now this is a symptom of simply being as close as we are. That's where our focus stacking rail is going to come in handy. And of course, we're going to add a little bit of extra light to try and improve our settings. Now, when you get as close to a subject as we're getting today, it becomes very, very difficult to get light into exactly where you need it, especially when you want control over that light, like we do today to be able to shine the light through the suite itself. If you were to bring in just a big softbox, uh, you'd not only cast a shadow from the front of the lens and this tiny little working distance of only a few centimeters, but you'd also be uh, just blasting out all of your shadows, uh, losing a lot of contrast and not really having the control to be able to shine the light through from behind. The lighting that we're using today is of course the Adapt Look Studio. I'm going to be bringing in uh, my control pod sat on a little mini tripod and then from the control pod we have flexible lighting arms. So this is a white lighting arm and it simply plugs into the front of the control pod and allows us to have uh, a very very powerful controllable light source. We can diffuse that light as well using clip-on diffusers. So we have a lot of options of moving our light around and placing it exactly where we need it to be to make our suite really pop. I'm going to get a basic setup going on to see if I can't improve the settings from my, uh, my little cherry suite here. And then we can really start to take some photos. So with a little bit of fiddling around of my lighting, bringing in two lighting arms into uh, my jelly suite here, uh, we can really start to see that color and the texture on the surface of the, uh, the suite. And my settings are considerably better. We're now at uh, 1 60th of a second ISO 800 and uh, F 11. So we managed to get a little bit of a wider depth of field. We also managed to get a much more um, favorable ISO. So adding a little bit of extra light not only um, brings you better settings, but it's also bringing out all of the color inside the suite. You can see that we've got one lighting arm pointed at uh, the back of the green area and then another lighting arm pointed at the top of the red one. So the, uh, the front lighting arm is picking up on all of the sugar. And the back lighting arm is bringing through the color. Uh, the translucency of the, um, the jelly is uh, allowing that light to pick the color of the sweet out and bring it through to the forefront. The very last thing that we need to do with this shot is focus stack. Now the, uh, the improved um, f-stop is much, much uh, appreciated. However, it's not going to give us a fully sharp image. That's what our focus stacking is for. I'm going to go through my image and take slices, take photographs at different points of my image where it's in focus. And then I'll run them through a program later on to, uh, to uh, bring everything into focus. If you'd like to know a little bit more about focus stacking, there's a link up in the top right hand corner. So after a really quick and dirty focus stack of only a few shots, I've got a really close up shot of the surface of the sugar on my jelly sweet. This little cherry has a lot of color in it as well. And that color and translucency are doing exactly what I hoped they would when we brought our sweets into a controlled environment and really took control over our lighting. Being able to move our light behind the jelly uh, while keeping a little bit of light at the front to uh, capture and highlight all of that sugar, it really works wonders to bring some color out in these sweets. And there's a lot of different textures and angles that we can go for on all of these different sweets. These big uh, packets of sweets have a huge variety of different flavors of sweets, different shapes and sizes. Uh, so there's a lot of photos to be taken from even a single bag of sweets. I'm going to set about trying some different angles, some different shots of different sweets and see if we can't get some really cool abstract shots. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about was adding a little bit of color of our own. You don't have to suffice with the colors that you're provided in your sweet bags. Now you can add a little bit of colored light as well. 
Uh, something like our um, licorice all sorts, this, uh, this little jelly sweet that you often find in those packets, uh, yes, it's pink and it's got this uh, pink outer surface, but the jelly on the inside is actually transparent and it's not got too much color to it. That leaves it looking a little bit dull when you get close up and you can see that sort of uh, plain yellowish uh, gelatin on the inside. Uh, so what I want to do is add a little bit of my own colored light to try and make it pop a little bit more. These little jelly sweets are really fantastic macro subjects, especially if you've got a nice controlled environment, you've got a means to get really super close to the surfaces like with this reverse lens setup. And of course, if you've got some nice controllable, adjustable, flexible lighting to uh, complement those colors and really put the light exactly where you need it to be. The lighting really is critical for a shoot like this when you've got uh, a lot of texture to highlight, when you've got those colours and that translucency makes all the difference to your end result. I'm really happy with the shots that I've got today with this sort of abstract glowing look from within the sweets. I think if you didn't already know that they were sweets, you might be uh, a little bit puzzled as to what you're looking at. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you think that's the case. Uh, if you think that there's anything else that could be done with uh, little jelly sweets like this or perhaps some other type of small foods. I'd really like to know and I'd like to know what you thought to today's video. So hit the like button as well. Make sure to subscribe for more macro photography tutorials, ideas and inspiration coming in the future. But for now, I think I've had my uh, fill of uh, sour sugary sweets for now. So that's all that I've got time for. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.